What's up, people? This is your girl, Danny Boo, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Danny Boo Show. Something nice, something new, something fresh for your view. Hot topic in the streets, one-on-one interview. Wall of vibes, call a friend, make a link with your crew. Step in at the dance hall with your girl, Danny Boo. Follow me everywhere, dance hall, go. Entertainment, everything you want to know. It's the Danny Boo Show. It's the Danny Boo Show. Oh, me say, follow me everywhere, dance hall, go. Entertainment, everything. Jamaica to Africa, dancehall is loved all over the world. Nazir went to Gambia and he shared his experience. One book, I did any book show, you know. Any other show, a low low show. Remember, every Saturday from 6 o'clock, Hype TV, you know the thing. Nancy every Zen feed. Danny Boo, both the man back and fifth man captain. Baby, you, darling. Both. You don't know, I'm go by the name Nazir. You see me, I said, I'm taking a girl in front of you, I'm <laughs> But you don't know, really, I'm Ocean, Orlando, Macri. You get what I said? So the journey to Gambia, Africa. It's like, what is it? I went there, 2017. You know what I mean? Me and Gage. You know what I mean? Virgin, on Egyptian tour. You get what I said? To England, so. And that's how you come about, you know what I mean? My profile, my one place. So I named Senny Gambia. You get what I said? You know what I mean? My first half is a profound for the show. And after I'm profound, <laughs> like go. You get me say so no value is not getting profound. I mean I load profound. Them silly performance and I like it. You hear that? So the G them say, alright then. We we'll bring your spice over because the place has a one buff in a be a buff to say Africa. So that's how it come about. I would just follow back over there. You see me I say and the buff them. Ladies and gentlemen! I will say boys and girls that they ain't no kids here tonight. Gambia, how you feel it? Make some noise! All the way from Kingston, Jamaica, this artist goes by the name of Nasir. Hope so now on the light on the phone, them take them out and, you know? But I'm gonna make one even nice and go out with a mug or something. So ready now, ready, 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 ready! Move them, move them, move them, move them, move them, two city, move them. Gambia, move them, run it! Watch out! Oh, man, I'm just a Muslim. Run, I'm just a Muslim. Gambia. Let me see Mr. Ounu Samuel. What is it? What is it? Let me see Mr. Ounu Samuel. What is it? What is it? Gambia. Let me see Mr. Ounu Samuel. What is it? What is it? What is it? Ah! From where you? We have Africa, Wanga, Africa. Don't you get me? I say so. It's nothing different from Jamaica. You get me? I say. Only thing different is not is the violence. You get me? I say that is it. The violence and them show more love. You get me? I say and them supportive as in them love dance hard. You get me? I say and friends come from Jamaica and them just know say yo. We are brother you know, welcome home. You know what I mean? I just love when them are giving a show. You know what I mean? So just for saying both the kids them. Girls, them, the woman, them, the elder, them, everybody, the youth, them, love the slang, they say, buff them, one buff. And say, big up Jamaica. Big up Jamaica. Jamaica. Boof them. Uh, <laughs> Damn, I yeah, oof them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 say, boof them. Damn, I oof them. So, we're going to get the same feeling we get as in the people, them. They're glad to see it. They're glad to say, yo, where you from? Kingston, Jamaica. Where, where, where? Yo, we love Jamaica. Yo, welcome, one, bro. So for me, it's just like my day in my yard, like yo, I'm just happy for the right there, because you come like I'm a place, man. you know what I mean? Just to be love with the youth, them, and try to learn the language, you know what I mean? Because I in, uh, English we speak, you know what I mean? And them speak different from we. So me, if you go there and just build with them and chill, and just know, so, alright then. I'm a heart there, right there, because that's where we come from, you know what I mean? Black people, the sea prayer, and just know, so yo, Africa, this. Yo, I'm mad sitting, sitting, man, I know Lulu thing, man, I want book, man, me and Ted Abigo, man, thing. Yeah. Everything boo. Everything boo. Everything boo. Everything boo. We there. 
Yeah. One bob. Yeah. One bob. One bob. Yeah. One bob. Everything two, one. Bob. One. <laughs> 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 one. One bob. Yeah. Yeah. Man, they're having, you know, African style. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And what is name? One year. What? One year. One year. Yeah. And we're drinking one year. Yeah, man. <laughs> No, like ginger. No, ginger. Yeah, we know ginger. You know ginger. You know ginger. You know ginger. You know baba. No, we don't know this one. What is your name? Baba. Baba juice. Baba juice. No. Okay, we don't drink, 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 drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not believing in our love. As in, you can't steal. You get me? I say, if you steal, it's like yo, you all get mob. You get me? I say because. That's a freedom thing. You know, steal for one another. You know what I mean? If you have one bird, cut it in half and shit, have shit. That's all them, them things. Remember, I said, one big place, everybody eats out, you know, 100 man. You know. And I like how we there, so I eat out of my own place. You can't touch my thing. You can't drink from my juice. One man, I drink out of 100 man, I drink out of one thing. And I like, say, them love man, I wear. I just see them grow, you know what I mean? So you see, I prefer to buff daddy, because I remember, I said, buff, you know, buff them. And then I go say, buff daddy. So I must buff daddy. Is it? Cause in a Gambia, them all call me Boof Daddy. The girl them love us, my star. Boof Daddy. Yeah. Good body, the Rika Shinelli. Watch out. She said they want to be young, just my body. Boof Daddy. Yeah. I want to see how Jamaican talent accepted in Africa. Nazir Shelong the place. Spice was also there. And as Nazir said, everything them do in Gambia, I for do with a Wally Palove. And next Jamaican talented person was also in somewhere in Africa, in Senegal, a famous dance instructor by the name of Latanya Styles. If you don't know her, Latanya Styles, she's the same one. She go on with a one Wally for something in Senegal. One Wally for culture exchange. She learned them dance, them learn fair dance. Watch it. My name is Latanya Style, dancer, choreographer, dance instructor, and lecturer. CEO of Dance Jamaica Academy. I am a Jamaican cultural ambassador. You're watching The Danny Boo Show on Hype TV. And The Danny Boo Show! February 2019, I went to Senegal, Dakar, and Luga village. It was my first time in the motherland, Africa. And overall, the trip was adventurous. It was educational. It was very interesting and a little bit emotional for me. The experience was not just about dancing because I went to teach dance hall and it was like nine hours, three days, teaching from old school to new school it was mainly male dancers that were interested a few female dancers so i did a little bit of female i didn't even do my own stylish moves but it was a wonderful learning experience as well because i learned their traditional dance which is called which is called saba it's very intricate it was a bit hard for me because you know it's a lot of technique involved a lot of flying and high kicks and stuff like that but other than the dancing it was a lot about just experiencing the authentic culture and the lifestyle i enjoyed the food a lot because it was very unique and interesting how they ate out of one plate the dishes were similar to jamaica so they had a lot of rice a lot of chicken um a lot of meat but because they are muslim they don't eat um pork so that's the same thing for me at home in jamaica so we eat the goats just like them and the food was delicious however the fact that we had to eat out of one plate i had to get used to that because they still eat with their hands and they're so kind and sharing sometimes they're like taking up the food throwing it for me to get like the good pieces of the meat and stuff and i was like oh my god but you know you had to learn to adjust and adapt to their lifestyle because 
for them it's just love to be sharing the meal, you know? So if you even went on the road or go and visit another family, you had to stay there and eat their food as well in the big plate. <laughs> so it was wonderful. It was interesting. Um, the place was full of dirt. That's one thing I can say also. Um, I actually experienced the Harmattan season, which is the Sahara Desert dust blowing into West African side. And trust me, I was breathing in dirt, straight dirt. But I mean, I survived because every morning we had herbal tea. And you know, when you go to Africa, you have to get all your, your medical shots and your vaccinations and stuff like that. So I came back healthy despite the dust and the, you know, the, the lifestyle with that. And another, sh it was like a culture shock for me as well because they are not using tissue to this day. So tissue is not something that they use when they go to the bathroom. They literally just wash. So that, that was a big culture shock for me. I didn't know that that still exists in the world. Um, but again, as I said, one thing familiar was like the dance hall. You know, we have a party every night and the street vibe and the culture is the same thing there. The only more exciting thing about it is that everybody gets the attention for themselves. So it's like a big circle. All the women sitting down, dressing very lavish. Because, you know, Africa is the fashion industry of the world. Like, their fabrics and their outfits, which are all custom made. Everybody have on their own headpieces and the gowns. And sitting in one big circle. And then everybody go up and dance on their own individually. So everybody gets a chance to shine and it's live music so there is hardcore percussion drums and oh my god the musical instruments were just amazing seeing it live and direct and just seeing the people dance and be happy despite the poverty and the poorness and all of that and you know it's similar to us in Jamaica the only thing is they're fully dressed unlike us that you know we're in the skimpy you know seductive exotic clothes they're more sorry fully dressed so that's the difference but the similarity is the enjoyment and the fun and they're just full of culture just like us and they're super talented just like us Jamaicans so I really felt home being in Senegal. Senegal dance is called Saba that's S-A-B-A-R I was there with a Saba instructor he's also one of the famous Saba dancers in Senegal so he actually lives in Germany and he goes back home to visit his family every year. Um, Khalifa, big up yourself. So I actually learned from him directly. The first day I learned some Saba moves was at the Ecole Dance Center, which is the biggest dance school in Senegal. Um, that's more in the city side. And he taught me in the dirt because that's where they dance, in the dirt. So Khalifa is going to teach me something in Saba. First yes. time learning authentic dance area. Okay. Yes, it's called dance hall the event is called dance hall so the event is called Saba so the Saba event is just strictly dance and it's mostly the women the men that dance they do it professionally and it's not about them so they probably come in the end of the party but the women are the center of attraction <laughs>
things that I taught, they were very, very welcoming and they were happy to learn from a real Jamaican. So all they had was just videos, YouTube watching videos. One guy in particular, he said he knew all Boga steps from my 22 Boga step videos that I have on YouTube. And he followed me from ever since he's growing up. So I felt really good that they actually knew me before I came there. And it was easy for them. Like when I go to Europe, it's kind of hard teaching them because their body is not like ours but the africans they learn it like one two three so one of the things i really liked is in dakar that's the city when you go to the park there's this big beach area that has a lot of exercise machines that are free for the citizens or guests or anybody to use i thought that was very impressive of the government um and the people actually use them so you walk and you see hundreds of people just exercising freely jogging and uh, you see the sunset coming down and people just jogging it was a really beautiful sight i wish we did that in jamaica that will promote a lot of healthy lifestyle and you know they don't have for who, those who can't afford the gym it would be good for them because it's free for everybody i really like that senegal did not have a lot of green there, I don't know if it, if it was drought season or what, but the trees were all just stems and there were no leaves on most of them, <laughs> but there was not green. There was, all right, the fresh air is not there because of the whole dusty Sahara desert coming and the whole dirt factor being there. Um, so you really appreciate where you come from when you go to those places because you step out of your house in Senegal, you step into dirt. And the dirt, I don't mean a flat dirt, I mean high dirt, your foot sinking in the dirt. So it's like you're walking in on a sandy beach every day. They have nice animals. Their wildlife is so interesting and amazing. I saw the literal giraffe, the ostrich. We were actually driving down the ostrich and he was so fast. He's actually as big as the car. So there are huge animals, the zebras, the, what do you call the Akuna Matata animal? <laughs> I don't remember the animal's name, some weird names, because we don't have them in Jamaica. But they had the wildlife, which was so cool to be there and, and witness those animals in their natural habitat. In Africa, when I saw a roach, I was like going to do some acrobatics and fly and screaming and acting like a big fool to them, because they were like, why is she going on like that? They don't have a problem with insects. So when I was like, oh, the cockroach, kill him, kill him. They're like, girl, calm down. And they went and they took him up and they threw him outside. They're not killing the cockroach. And the mosquitoes and the bugger fly them, them not kill them. They're just like, I wasn't even fanning so much. They didn't even mind them pitching on them. So they are one with nature more than us. So we are kill everything left, right, and center. They did not do that. And I really was like, wow, you guys really have a good heart. You know? So that was, that was an interesting moment for me as well. The fashion industry in Africa on a whole is very diverse. They have a lot of fabric, authentic African fabric of all different designs. Like you go to a, a shop to buy fabric, you can't decide like, wow, all of them look good. So I think it's very cool for them to have all these prints, these African prints that are used worldwide they use them for their clothes they use them for their household like the pillows and the sheets and the curtains and stuff like that what i like about their fashion is that everything is custom made so there's not much clothes that are ready made so you have to literally buy a fabric and you go to the tailor and it makes something nice for you and they have some very creative ideas i love the fact that they wear all these head pieces and just look you know, raw, you're like, the women just look like queens with these headwear. And they're very modest. So even me wearing my leggings over there, everybody was just staring at me the whole time. Because they already told me, don't wear shorts because you can't be so exposed as women. Because they're Muslim, so they don't accept that. The women must be fully covered. So me, I was just like, okay, so my tights means I'm fully covered. Not really, because you're actually shaping out your body, which is not so good for them so the women wear long skirts and the men their shirts are as long as the they, they go all the way down to the ankle it looks like dress but they're not dressed they're actually shirts 
and that's their passion over there. So, you know, Jamaican men, if they see that, they'll be like, yo, bad man, no wear a dress or whatever. Nah, it's like a fashion for men. And it's even better too because they're not shaping out them bodies and not tight pants like Jamaican wear. So homophobic, yet still every man allows to wear this close fitted or tight pants. For the African men, they prefer to actually cover up their body as well. So you don't shape them bottom now, shape out like some other man over here. So them actually wear long shirts that look like dress, but they are not dresses. I don't remember the exact name, but I'll tell you. When you see me, just ask me and I'll tell you. <laughs> but I brought back some. So I'm actually going to give like the fashion men that are brave enough to wear it and see how what will be the reaction in the streets. for today's show big up the sponsors believe me you guys made it possible right now we're still there in the streets kind of don't know dance all our thing so until next week this is your girl danny boo and you're watching the danny boo show something nice something new something fresh for your view a topic in the streets one-on-one -on -one interview Hola vibes call a friend make a link with your crew step in the dance hall with your girl danny boo follow me everywhere dance i'll go entertainment